Hello and welcome to Sure Shot Archery. Anthony here, and in this video, I'm going to give you my review of uh, the 2019 Texas Shootout held in College Station on uh, or around the Texas A&M campus. Now, this was uh, the fourth USAT event and the final USAT event of the year, and it also served as stage two of Olympic team trials. So, as an archer that attended the event, and uh, I also filmed the event, uh, I'm going to give you my take on the event, things I really liked about it, things I feel like need to be improved, and just their overall, just feedback of what I think. Um, now, just want to let you know, I really appreciate everybody's work that goes into this event. I know that USAT events with hundreds of archers attending and then all the setup and just organizing everything, work, working with, you know, the school and, you know, local governments and things like that and getting all that rolling. Yes, that's lots of work. But as a consumer of the product that you are producing, the tournament, as the consumer of that tournament, me, the archer attending, I have some important feedback that I would like to share. First, we'll start off with uh, the positives because there is a lot of good things and I definitely want to thank the volunteers from the college and maybe the local shooting uh, community for volunteering to help run this shoot. Um, you guys are awesome and I really appreciate it. So let's get started. So I have a whole book here and the first thing on my list is, well, what I just said, lots of volunteers and I appreciate what they had to uh, you know, do and the effort they put in to make sure that the tournament ran as smoothly as possible. And that was my second point. Basically, the shoot did run well. Um, it was pretty well organized. Uh, there wasn't any major, uh, you know, issues with it. Some little things that I have in this book here uh, that we will hit on. But basically, overall, it was a well-ran, well-designed shoot. With that uh, registration, or I guess check-in, plus e equipment inspection, uh, both ran pretty well. Uh, I didn't stand in a line. You know, there's always lines earlier on or once they start opening it because everybody, like, flocks there at once. But uh, other than that, they were nice and quick and timely on, uh, you know, doing all of that. And just, just getting you, you know, back to shooting, back to practicing. Um, in the, uh, the check-in, we actually got a welcome bag. And I will be going through that welcome bag in this video because, well, I, I looked at it briefly only to take out my free uh, ticket for uh, free barbecue. Yes, they had a free lunch uh, in between the first and second uh, qualifications. Between the AM line and the PM line, there was a barbecue lunch, and uh, I used my ticket for that. So uh, let's go look into here real quick, take a break from the, the ups and downs. First off, we have <laughs> we have Chex Mix. They gave us they give us snacks. That's pretty cool. Looks like there's some other goodies. We'll be right back to those. But uh, next up, another positive: uh, the PM shoot and eliminations. Um, it was at 9:45 for the PM line, and not AAM, 8 a.m. Um, so let me explain this. So there was. A group of archers shooting in the morning, AM, and then there was a group of archers shooting in the PM. And this was for official practice day, qualification, and eliminations. So it was nice as a PM shooter not to have to wake up early on any of those days. Now as an AM shooter, you woke up early all three of those days. But it was nice for me as a PM shooter not to have to get up at, uh, well, it would be earlier than 8. It was nice to not have to get up to shoot by 8 o'clock, and then I could wait till 9.45. Now, uh, <laughs> the, the kind of poor side of that is, is that I guess time-wise, it wasn't estimated the best. I didn't end up shooting my head-to-head -head matches until 10.30 that day. So, a bit off, almost a, about an hour off on the whole time layout before we actually got started for the PM line. Uh, shooting on uh, the eliminations day. You know, I know these things happen. Um, it would just have been nice if, you know, that was timed out a little bit better. I know there's only so much you can do and you can, you know, you can't predict, you know, equipment problems and things like that. Even though there, there really didn't seem to be that, it just seemed to be slow to get started. Um, 
with that. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of a biggie. Uh, there was a repeat of people dipping their towels into the water jugs. I, I don't understand what is so hard about this concept. So at a lot of these events, uh, the I, I guess USA Archery or at least the Joad program or whatever that's hosting the event, they usually supply either bottled water or jugs filled with water, like big coolers. Um, well, this time they had the big coolers, you know, filled with water and ice, and then they had them ratchet strapped closed. People actually opened them up. They took the ratchet strapped off in order to dump their towels that they were wrapping around their necks into them. I, I don't understand what's so hard. Like the water's for drinking, first of all, and then it's disgusting that you bother to remove something that was fixed you know this lid was is attached for a reason you take it off to dump your 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 stuff into it that's gross um the least you could do is just push a little tap uh you know on the front that squirts out the water and just do it that way there's no need to dump your towel into the water bucket that's gross i personally bring my own water um other archers were on the lookout for people doing it um, and they were just going to dump the waters because you don't want somebody drinking that. Like people are wearing these, you know, they're, they're wearing their towels or their hats or whatever. They're all sweaty and then they're dumping them in water. People are drinking. It's, it's disgusting and grossly irresponsible by, uh, just the archery community as a whole. This is not even something that's on the tournament. Uh, us archers should know better and people in the community that are doing this. I don't know. Maybe we need to get to the point where I just start calling people out. I, I don't know, but uh, I think it's it's uncalled for. Uh, I've now heard this actually run a couple tournaments, and I think it's a major issue because it's, it's just gross. It's unsanitary and, and just things like that. It, it just, it shouldn't happen. Uh, n another uh, point of criticism from my experience is uh, the sound quality was really bad. So there were speakers set up, and yes, the wind was blowing, but Regardless, you could not hear a thing. It was... It sounded like uh, the parents in Charlie Brown. All you hear And that was it. You, you couldn't hear the directions being given by DOS. And I don't know how much... There was probably some things they could do, like maybe talking to the microphone with the wind at your back. Or, you know, some of this was microphone noise from the wind hitting the microphone that the person is talking into. Other parts of it, you know, was the wind blowing, like, into the speakers that were trying to emit, you know, the the sound. So there was, there was kind of a mess with that, and I really don't feel like there was much being done to correct it. Uh, it did get a little bit better on the uh, Eliminations Day, but then again, you know, the wind was a little bit less. So, may, you know, maybe that, you know, helped, you know, make the sound sound better. But uh, I feel like a little more effort or, or something should have went into into fixing that. Like if you're if you're talking into something and we can't hear you, you know, I don't know. We gotta f at least attempt to find a way to improve it. I know there's only so much you can do. You're on a, <laughs> on a field in in Texas or wherever, because this this you know this could be an issue that happens in Ohio or in California or, or wherever we have the next USAT event. But I'm just bringing it up because it is important because people need to know what's going on so that this shoot, you know, runs smoothly. Um, regardless of that, the shoot did pretty much run smoothly. You know, I, as I said earlier, I didn't have, uh, you know, there wasn't a big issue with things not running well. So even with the audio problem, they managed to pull it off. So big plus there, just that it would be, it would be nice to have that working uh, spot on. Now back to our bag. We have some paperwork here. What do we got? Uh, we have a ad for uh, experience, Brian and College Station, and all the uh, the things that that go along with that, and uh, just a nice uh, thing for you know, welcome to the Texas Shootout, and I guess this is the head of their their sports department. I uh, see something. There's something about a kangaroo. Um, Anyway, some paperwork that I have no, probably never going to read. Um, <laughs> and uh, with that, back to uh, my take on things. 
uh, couldn't check in early. Now, I was there at the AM line. Now, I technically was scheduled to shoot PM. So I went to the AM line to shoot video and to just, you know, just talk with people, hang out, uh, you know, my archery friends and family, people that are fans of uh, short shot archery. I go early to talk to people and to film. Um, but I wanted to take the opportunity since I was there early to make it a little bit easier. The people in uh, or at the official check-in booth were just sitting there. They had nothing to do. And, yeah, they were talking amongst themselves, whatever. You know, they're, they're volunteers, so all cool. But I walked up and was like, hey, can I check in? And they're like, all right. And I was like, oh, I'm PM. And they're like, oh, we, we can't do that. Is it, is it not the same packet? Like, you got this nice thick packet. There's no way you don't have names for both. Now, I understand it. Maybe, maybe it is a bit of a pain in the butt. But, hey, I could have been one person, you know, off your list for checking in in another two hours. Because I was like, you know, I was a couple hours early. I was going to try to check in a few hours early. That way, they don't have to deal with me later on. <laughs> but uh, that didn't work out. And I really think we should go back to just let people check in. Once they're done, they're done. Then you, then you don't have to worry about them. And it's not like they didn't have, they had their bags there and, and everything, so that's not really an issue. So, I don't know, that's my two cents on that. And let's get back into this bag. We got a couple more things. I'm really into giving out food. We got a, an almond bar from Nature Valley. And I don't have too many more points. Oh, huh, all right, a stretch band. Yeah. Wow. It's a pretty pretty hardcore stretch band. Alright, this is actually pretty neat. It's actually I think nicer than the one we've gotten from Lancaster in the past. It's really strong too. Alright, this might actually come in handy. Uh, all the other stuff. Well, the food you can eat, that that's that's always good. But uh, the rest of it, I guess that's gonna get recycled. Um now uh next up. Oh, we're, 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 we're kind of back to the waters. I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but you know, these are the notes I wrote as I went through this. Um, there were complaints about the taste of the water in the jugs because, well, it's city water. And I don't know, I guess a lot of people don't, don't have that or it was really rough tasting city water. Like I knew people that were coming from major cities and they're like, this is like drinking a swimming pool. Um, me personally, I always just buy a case of water at Walmart or whatever. And then I use that. Uh, you know, the whole weekend because I don't, I don't want to deal with, you know, things like that. But interestingly enough, after, you know, people dunking things into the jugs and people sit complaining about how poor the water taste and quality was, um, it was put that there was a donation made by the, uh, the city of College Station and they gave us water bottles. I'm not sure if they actually donated anything. Maybe they did. Maybe they actually did. Um, but... At the same point in time, the setup of it was very similar to other tournaments with the troughs with ice and then the water sitting on top of them. So I'm thinking either USA Archery or uh, you know Texas A&M that was hosting the event, uh, maybe they just went out and actually just picked up waters and you know put them into these. Anyway, that seems to solve a lot of problems because if you have water bottles, then people, well, they can't dunk their stuff into them. The water bottles are sealed. Whew. And then at the same point in time, Everybody's got water bottles. The water is, you know, purified or spring or whatever. Anyway, it tastes not like a swimming pool. So <laughs> that's very good. Uh, and it made a lot of people really happy because, again, you know, you know, the archers are, are the customers in this. We're paying a lot of money and spending a lot of time at these tournaments. So, you know, there should be a particular quality to them. Otherwise, you know, in a sense, you're just, you're kind of kind of scamming us, uh, in 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 a way, in a way. Uh, so I, I really I was really happy that that was resolved because the bottled water is is nicer. And I actually ended up going through my entire. I think we got like a 42 pack of water. I went through all of that in the uh, first uh, a couple days, and then. Luckily, they had those water, so then I started drinking those because I, you know, I already drank. A whole case of water <laughs> over the three previous days or so. Um, next up was Easy Ups. Um, I guess they were probably really cheap, 
They also look like they were previously used, so maybe the college has had them around for quite some time, and it was just a cheap, easy way of providing shade for the tournament. In reality, uh, the Easy Ups are kind of terrible. Uh, they don't provide great shade unless you're constantly adjusting them. Uh, at the same point in time, they're like a wind hazard, so all the volunteers were out trying to hammer them down because the wind was actually like ripping them out of the ground at, at one point. Uh, we actually had a couple <laughs> go flying uh, because, uh, well, the wind caught them on a really strong uh, gust during official practice day and, you know, it <laughs> took one away a little bit and we had to, you know, wrangle it down and they had to, you know, hammer it back down. So, I don't know, it seemed like an unnecessary hassle, especially since uh, the canopy system that they had at other tournaments that was one continuous or one just very or several very large canopies was much more effective uh, than uh, these little easy ups. Uh, the big one piece canopies provide so much more shade. There was never really a concern about them like blowing over in the wind. Like here I am like holding down my easy up as it's rocking back and forth and like lifting off the ground because the wind's, you know, taking it away and the little 10 by 10 easy up. It, it, I don't know. It, it, <laughs> it was comical at the same point in time, impractical. And, uh, that's why it made the list because I feel like, you know, we're, 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 we're investing all this, this money. Why? We, there has to be an economical way for us to have, you know, quality tents for all the tournaments. I know at previous ones that they were renting them and that from what I've heard, they're pretty expensive. So I, I feel like we need to, to look into this to see if just owning our own and then just shipping it places is better or just having somebody that drives to all of these, you know, bring, I don't know, there, there's got to be a, a, a way to, um, you know, make this work, to work this out. Uh, I, I just think uh, we got to, you know, work together and think about it. Uh, I feel like a lot of stuff that gets done is, is sometimes like ran through like one person the person that came up with the idea and then everybody else is just so oh okay we're doing this now instead of like having you know people like oh you know what this is not a great idea let's let's try something else but uh i don't know sometimes i feel like that doesn't happen but here here i am i'm just an archer that pays to go to these shoots giving my uh two cents about them in hopes of improving them for my fellow archers in the future and of course myself in the future because i intend to keep going uh, to these events because it's a lot of fun and I enjoy archery and sharing it with the community. Um, other than that, uh, I really don't have anything else. I know it kind of seemed like a lot for this tournament, but there was just a lot of things that kind of escalated out of control between like the easy ups and the, the water situation, which is ridiculous. I don't know. Like, I, <laughs> I feel like it's kind of silly to make a video solely about this, but at the same point in time, uh, from what I'm hearing now from people, it's been a reoccurring problem that I, I was partially aware of, but I wasn't like, I was like, oh, well, this is going to be solved, you know, and, but it doesn't get solved. So I don't know if I end up having to make my own video talking about this and be like, hey, people, if you do this, let me know and we'll, 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 we'll solve it, uh, our, our own way. Um, other than that, uh, this is a really great shoot was a bit windy, uh, but, you know, things are always improving in archery, and it's going to be, it's always going to keep getting better, well, at least, <laughs> at least I'm going to keep trying to make it better, so thank you so much for watching, uh, there'll be links to, like, the Texas AM, Texas Shootout site, uh, if you want more information, uh, USA Archery as well, you know, I don't run these things, I just attend them, I'm the customer at them, so thank you so much for watching, please like and subscribe, uh, share this video, I would love to hear other people's feedback, you know, maybe I have this completely wrong, uh, but this was my experience, so I want to hear yours, so thank you so much for watching, and as always, happy shooting!